So they decided to go and import foreigners. Now, when you are no man can't jump. We go in real no more. Now, we go to go do. Or we go to school. Now, we go to. Now, we refuse to go. The whole year, in so I have problem there. Any one man here now started. Aye, Obina, Opese, Anka, Omuye, Aye, Nanka, Aye, the speed. Nanka, Aye, court. Nanka, Aye, stop it. Galam safe for. Nanka, Aye, lose your seat. Yes, stop you. I'm on. Yes, stop you. I'm on. China. Now I'm a confirm with TV for an accord. Now I'm woman crow for a and a galamse and a galamse. Now galamse, you two know a cra. In so no a cra. I'm on bra. Come on, say my demonstration and come by a steady. President, the father of the nation, made a firm vow to stop galamse. But regrettably, that promise has not been fulfilled, Mr. President. You are barely three months until the end of the administration, and we are hopeful that you will deal with the situation before you leave office. We still maintain that a state of emergency must be declared over our water bodies and all planned and active mining concessions overlapping with river buffers should be abrogated and all mining activities within 100 meters buffer of all rivers and streams should be halted with immediate effect. We also reiterate that LI-2462 should be repaired immediately. I took the decision that that would be a betrayal of the trust that the Ghanaian people put on me, in me, on the 7th of January this year. And as a result, we established this committee within the government to design a policy for us, not just to stop it, to reclaim the land, to let our rivers work again, but also to see how we can figure a way for all these able-bodied young men who are involved in this activity to find an alternative livelihood. So it's a package. It's a package that we have designed to try and bring this menace to a conclusion. I've said it in the cabinet and perhaps it's the first time I'll be saying it in public. I am prepared to put my presidency on the line on this matter. I've heard it being said that uh, oh, I should be careful. These, some, many of these people voted for me, and if I continue this exercise, perhaps they'll not vote for me again. If, if by the grace of God, I'm in, I'm, I, I'm in a position, my party allows me to go again, and I have the health and everything to go again, that I'll not get it again. And I'll say to myself, well, this is a choice that all of us have to make as human beings. You do what you think is right, or do you do what you think will allow you to get along? I think that you do what you think is right. That is what you're required to do. 
And subsequently, just before that insert, you saw in there, the president of the Ghana Journalist Association, Albert John Foy, is getting a lot of accolades. And also, we ha have to make mention of Erasa Sasari Donko, the rest of uh, the journalists across the platforms, including Media General. There's also um, Fred Duho of uh, Channel One TV or City FM, who also put a plaster on his lips and subsequently held a placard. And Fred, as I know him, <laughs> Uh, very vociferous, decided also to leave the Stop Galamse placard just in front of the podium as the event was ongoing. It speaks volumes about the sum of the sentiments across the Ghanaian public, about the concerns that have been raised when it comes to the main issues on Galamse. We'll be joined by our guests this morning, but uh, from the Stevens Hotel in the Volto Regional Capital Hall. Let me say good morning to a number of you as well. We have Venyonam, uh, Sela, and then also Bless, and uh, Filippo and the rest of the team at the Stevens Hotel. I wish you all the best for the week as well. But let me say good morning to all those who have joined us, Bruce Foucault. Uh, please make sure you share the stream. Let's have some great interactions. And subsequently, let me just introduce um, our guests this morning. Uh, he currently speaks for the Ministry of Education, Kwesi Kwating. Good morning to you. Good morning, Roland. Mm. And then also I have here with me as well, lawyer Eduji Tamaklo. He's become a regular on Mondays. And uh, good morning to you, Eduji Tamaklo. Good morning. Good morning, Roland. Good morning to my co-panelists. All right. And then, yeah, Wabi has some more legal practitioners as well. And I keep saying that the first time or in the, my, my formative years, he was a governance uh, and transparency advocate with Transparency International, which metamorphosed into the Ghana Integrity Initiative, as we know it today, and then became a mainstream politician. Good morning to you. Uh, now with the Movement for Change. Good morning, Rola. Right. And when it comes to Brandon, he's always there, always in the yellow to show us that... Uh, the movement for change is making inroads. But what do you make of the comments so far, especially not only coming from the latest man on the block, the president of the Ghana Journalists Association, and thereof? And uh, Kwesi how did the president receive that? Yeah, really. uh, good morning once again, and good morning to your viewers. Uh, I think when I was coming, I was watching the incest that you played. Uh, first of all, let me say that, I mean, beyond the politics, I, my, I mean, my opinion, I feel that some of the comments, commentaries that were just played, I feel uh, in, in some extent, particularly referring to the EU, free year one, maybe to a larger extent, he misspoke uh, to the extent that I, I believe that the position on, of government on the fight against Galonsi has been clear. But at every point, we must distinguish uh, between small-scale mining and, of course, uh, the illegal mining, which is Galamse. And government has made it clear that at no point do we condone uh, Galamse, especially those kind of mining that are being done within the river bodies. But, I mean, moving beyond that, I have always had a view that the whole problem of Galamse uh, stems from the fact that maybe with regards to our enforcement uh, as a people, we need much improvement. It also goes beyond enforcement. And maybe today I'm going to introduce that bit of also political financing. That is a conversation that as a people, we've not been able to look at. And some way, somehow, we sit on TV, argue between NPP and the NDC, who did worse, who did better. And you go back to the Galamse size and the problem still persists. Because ultimately, if you look at political financing, I mean, <laughs> senior is here, and he has been through this game for quite a long time. Averagely, he has run an election before. I had the opportunity to run an election just this MPP parliamentary primary. Yes, yeah. in my primaries, yes. And you, you got finances from Galamseyes, those who do <laughs> illegal mining? No, that, no, that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying that what if, you, you saying? if you look at a campaign financing regime or architecture, that averagely an, um, an ex-parent will have to spend close to about 4 million, 5 million Ghana cities to be able to elect it as an MP. And even with that one, you have no uh, sacred chances or short chances of becoming the member of parliament in your seat. Of course, you are also even looking at presidential elections 
then we, we, we have to understand that we have a very weak framework when it comes to political financing. And there is also that correlation between, I mean, politically exposed persons getting positions that they want. And of course, uh, Galamseyes also come in. Because, I mean, these are guys who have the money, who have the resources, who have the power, who have the energy, who are, want to buy every influence. Uh, so far as the work they do is concerned. I mean, they would want to protect their industry. So I'm saying that if you are a politically exposed person, the temptation for you to be financed from these guys becomes very high. I mean, who on... Mr. Ordinary... Kwasi Kwateng, you, you're a very astute communicator yeah. and then a man of your own right in terms of your education, knowledge and experience, as young as you are. Are you saying that the conversation now should be that the stream of money that is generated from illegal mining, because we have legal mining on small scale basis, and then we have Galamse, that has now destroyed our water bodies and the funding thereof or the sources of funding thereof coming out of those streams are now deeply being used to finance political party activity. As a result of that, that's why we're all playing ostrich. I am saying that, I mean, for emphasis sake, I am saying that if we continue to play politics around this whole, I mean, Galamse menace, and of course, we do not also cast our mind and look at the whole political financing regime and framework and pretend that some way, somehow, when a doji is able to raise 5 million Ghana cities to be able to run for election, or Kwasi Kwati is able to raise 7 million Ghana cities to be able to run for an election, some way, somehow, we miraculously engineered those monies and it's not coming from any source, then it's problematic. And I've also maintained that there is a correlation between the activities of these illegal miners and political financing. So for me, I want to invite all of us to broaden the conversation quite broader. That yes, the Galamse is a very huge menace, but you see, the fight against Galamse has failed largely because of two main issues. One, burdening on the fact that when it comes to our enforcement regimes, it's been quite weak as a people. And I mean, this time I'm not going to say whether it's MPP or NDC. In terms of enforcement generally, as a people, we need much improvement. It's not only Galam say that you have an enforcement issue with. Senior is a lawyer. Uh, uh, Mr. Yabwabi yeah, 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 also is also a lawyer. And he knows that when it comes to enforcement regimes, particularly bordering on road safety, bordering on sanitation, even our criminal justice system, as a people, we need significant improvement there. Similarly, if you look at enforcement regimes, within, let's say, the Galamse conversation. We, when we came into power, we have issued a lot of alliances. Ordinarily, one would have thought that when you issue alliances, it goes with regulations. But as a people, we have to admit that when it comes to enforcement regimes, we need much and better improvement. But away from the enforcement, and I'm introducing that leg of the correlation or the marriage between political financing and the Galamse activities. How? I mean, this is a very lucrative Party, How did you connect the two? All of a sudden. <laughs> I am saying that I am connecting the two because ordinarily or ultimately you will still require political leadership to be able to take decisions. And who, and who and is the head of the political I, leadership? I'm, I'm not sure it's necessary now whether or not these MPP were in this. Because you see, when a DOJ comes the president to, of the Republic of Ghana. No, I mean, you, and you, you well know that in the constitution, all minerals. Can, can, can I land? Because your, your, of, no, your, your question is if you want to be very simplistic and mechanical about this, fine. But I'm saying that irrespective of who is in power, whether the NDC or whether the MPP. Ultimately, the NDC mm. will run a campaign. It will be financed by human beings. It will be financed by, I mean, people who have vested interests. If you go to the United States, for instance, there's been conversations that one of the major political parties are being financed by the, the gun industry. There are also conversations that others are also being financed by promoters of gay, LGBT, and what have you. These are opinions that people hold as to whether or not they are valid are uh, something that we can look into it. But if you come to our contest, I'm saying that broadly we have to look at that aspect of the conversation and ask ourselves why political leadership, irrespective of where we stand, whether the MPP or the NDC, particularly during elections here, are unable to tackle the issue head on. That's what I'm saying, that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new realm that as the people we have to look at it. Because I am not sure if today, Senior Baben is able to raise 10 million Ghana cities to say that, Mr. Allah, I'm using to sponsor your campaign. Some way, somehow, there are no strings attached to it. And we have to look into that. We have to question and ask the sources of those money. And for me, my view is that there is a correlation between 
galamse activities or illegal mining and political financing. Maybe that is why systematically, from even predating independence up, to, up till now, we've not been able to be that very categorical, that bold when it comes to the fight against galamse. Of course, I understand and I admit that ultimately it rests on leadership. And ultimately, political leadership will still have to be provoked. But you see, we just have three months to election. If you have politically exposed persons, I mean, recently, just yesterday, I just like I condemned uh, a year free years vid uh, video and comments that I, in my own opinion, I feel he, mis he misspoke. If you recently recall, I watched Professor Jenna no Pokwajman, where she was also in some of these Galamse areas, also promoting that when they come, people are going to do I'm surprised that you betrayed the issue of that video, but we elected to only show that of a UFA. At least there should be that balanced reportage. Beyond that, just last, last election, if you recall, when former President Mohammed also reiterated that when he came, he's going to give Galamse, who has been imprisoned, amnesty. When you have political leadership also meddling in this whole fight, I mean, one also asks whether they are not vested interests, particularly when they have political outcomes or they impact on political outcomes. So, yes, we can sit here, debate, sit on TV, talk about Galamse, I mean, use all the nine ways, do all the blame games. But, Roland, and to yourself and myself and all of the panelists here, we move to, for instance, I mean, East. We move to where, I mean, areas where they are having Galamse and really ask of the problem that Galamseers are facing. And as people, we are able to come out with a very bold solution that this is what we are going to do about it or how we are going to do about it, particularly when it comes to that aspect that I've just brought into being. The correlation between Galamseyes and, of course, political uh, parties, uh, activism and financing. And then as a people, we make a bold decision and define a very bold framework when it comes to political activities financing. We will just be deceiving ourselves and tickling ourselves and laughing as a people. Edwige, that's where we are. So, is that where we are? Is, so, that, is that where the conversation needs to go? Roland, let nobody confuse the issues. Meaning what? We cannot, at this critical moment, be having a conversation about political financing. I think we need to be very clear. Let nobody gaslight us into having a conversation when the real issues are there. Which, so, which, are, which are the real issues? First of all, I think it's really proper that I congratulate the winners at the, the, the Ghana Journalist Association, uh, particularly Fred, um, Ed, uh, Edward, Adeti, and others. And look, I'm so happy with Edward from such a humble beginning to the point of becoming Journalist of the Year. I'm hoping that next year to be you. Now that said, you see, first of all, we have a president of the republic. Ghanaians went to the poll in 2020, believing that we have a president who cares about the environment, who cares about our water bodies. What we have seen today is a president who does not care. Meaning what? He doesn't care because? He doesn't care because, one, like you rightly pointed out, the Constitution invests all minerals in one person in trust for all of us. So you cannot, as it were, you cannot have a situation where anybody can mine a mineral in this country, right, without the president's approval or disapproval. That's one. Two, you have a situation where this president says he had put his presidency on the line. Now, when you have a situation where the person comes out to say, I had put my presidency on the line, what it tells you is that between his life and that of the presidency, he elevated that of the presidency to a very high level. Now, if after the man had put his presidency on the line, the scorecard is not improved state of our water bodies, but a disruption of our water bodies. That is the mark of failure. And that is why I associate with a statement made by the GJA president, Mr. June 4, right in front of the president, that Mr. President, regrettably you have failed in the fight against Galamsey. Look. 
when I heard Dr. Ayu Afri, who happens to be Dr. Mahmoud Balmier's campaign coordinator for Middle Belt, it's important. Why is that important? Why it is important is that he tells you Balmier's mind in the campaign. Because you see, when this man comes here to speak, and he says, I am the PRO for the education ministry, he's no longer expressing his personal views. He's expressing the views of the ministry. So where... How did you have the two co-terminals? I will, I will demonstrate that. So where, in this case, Dr. Ayu Efriye, who happens to be Dr. Mahmoud Bahamir's campaign coordinator for the middle bet, on the campaign platform says that we will not stop Galamse today, we will not stop Galamse tomorrow. What he tells you is that he's echoing the views of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia on the campaign. And that, for me, is significant. So it is not just the failure of Mr. Akufuado, but you can see that that symbiotic relationship between the president and the vice, now the flag bearer of the MPP, is clear that, as for Galamse, we have no plans to fight it. Now, you know what? Only fight it. Please. The MPP have bought all this narrative and given to all their communicators. What's the narrative? The narrative is simple. That we lost parliamentary seats in 2020 because Akufado supposedly fought Galamse. Bare face lies. And I'll demonstrate something to you. Ashanti region has 47 constituencies. The typical Galamse constituencies are 21. Within the Amansia Odotobri, right into Obuase, Adanse, Formina, those enclaves. Then you come to Manso, Edubia, Manso, Enquanta, enclave. Then you come to Konongo, the side. Who side? No, where my brother okay. Kwate is coming from. If you put all those 21 seats together, MPP won all of them in 2020. So it cannot be correct that Akufado's fight affected the number of seats. Ashanti Reje, it never did. Just point number one. Point number two, Eastern Region. In fact, the only MPP seat that NDC took in 2020 was Akwetia. Akwetia simply because Amase, who was then the then parliamentary uh, MP, decided to go independent. And it affected the MPP, not because of Galamse. Not because of Galamse? At all. If you look at Pristia Wuni Valley, it was already NDC seat, and we lost by 1,500 in 2016. 2020, we recovered the seat. So when you come and sit on national television and create the impression that because Akufado fought Galamse, that is why MPP lost the seat. Now, look at this. MPP lost Adenta. They don't do Galamse in Adenta. MPP lost Crowo, no Galamse in Crowo. Lejukuku, no Galamse in Lejukuku. Okan Kwenov, no Galamse. So the seat MPP lost in the 2020, how do you connect it to the fight against Galamse? It is a contrived narrative just to let Akufado know that he should not fight the Galamse. And, and I'll just conclude on this, I beg you. This morning, my brother says, Professor Jerry, nah, nah make the point about Galamse. Nowhere. Are we using the same Oh, time? please, please. Yes, the same Yeah, time. I tell you, Shira. What, what is key is that Prof was clear. I'll he kept, Yes, and she kept using the word responsible mining. Responsible mining. In fact, if you play the video, she kept using the word responsible mining. Listen to her free. Now, you know what? Mrekuduka. Mrekuduka. He happens to be Dr. Bahamir's coordinator on mining or whatever in the campaign. So it means that he reflects the mind. Listen to the video. The man says we won't do it. And now regrettably now make uh, the Shabra, point that get me, get me, NDC went get me out the there and imported Togolis. Let's get that. Okay. If you have, no, hold on. Just 30 seconds. We have a Hey. Ibinye Abazi. Eh, hey, nina, ye, jina, hey. Ye, nina, be there. Ame, fiha. Galamse o hapa, ana onye ha. Galamse funo wahi. Wenye magana hane wa. 
enya nda nkwete na sabe sabe ye hu da gold wa ha na enya nda nkwete ni enya galam se wa ha na se enya abana ono a ejuma oho ogogun kakra oho no ogogun ono so onfa ejuma nka ho a ebe na ze na mebu no waye se we hu ise ye na ebe nsampa na yezerba yesede da mebi no krom onso ye galam se na won sun se no the man I see about for the near church I am, but the more by and or the more by and now. In Sumara, all say I want up or want a bra, all say I want a dachin, all say I want in Bibia. In since she said, Pamo Nezerba, Mobaya, Sadamana Banaso Baya, I shall no quan on ye. No, I shall no quan our agent, the man on the sock I am on him. If you soon say yes or no, I said, Why and then no banadam. In Sunoya, some pokra, Yezerba. E me bunu no ye nyimde wo hie adwuma ono so ka ho sin ye ze 24 hour economy ni ye ze bana na na lo ya be and so now we've even come to the point where Alan and the movement for change are saying we need uh, is there a one year ban you say yes okay so the conversation about it being MPP and DC a political stakeholders issue which needs to be given a wider scope of discussion than we are doing now. How do we discuss the narrative, Lawyer YB? Let's make it very clear. Please make it clear. What is happening now is against the interests of the mining industry and the nation generally. Mm. Because Ghanamsi has always been with us. No, because mining has always been with us. Mm. The, the notion of Ghanamsi is where practices involved in extracting the gold are inimical to the environment, especially water bodies, and recently, invasion of forests. Mm. That recklessness, that, that lack of regard for, for the future, that, that inability to protect what is there, destroying farms, fauna, what the food we eat, the water we drink, the fish in the water, that is the problem. And that problem is not solved by those who are pretending to have licenses. They take li Having a, a legal license doesn't mean you are doing the right thing. It is the practices that are the problem. And it doesn't also reflect well on the large-scale companies mm -hmm. either. Because as long as mining is going on of one form or the other without effective control, then we have a problem. And that problem is that this has turned into an existentialist threat in this country. It cannot be justified in any form by any political party. And I'm shocked. Mm. And Kwatin is shocked by his own party. How do you mean? Listen to Dr. Are you, uh, 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 you a free? <laughs> and I wouldn't condone what they are doing for one second. I was already been. I, I wouldn't condone it for one second. Listen to are you a free? Listen to Duka. These are the people who are supposed to be in charge of managing this process so that it turns into something different for the country to benefit from, for the people who are involved to benefit effectively and properly. It can't be the case that we will go on like this. So what I'm saying that we should be clear about is that if any of the political parties doesn't have a clear plan to resolve mining in total so that we have clean environmentally sensitive and sustainable mining, then that party doesn't deserve our votes. Particularly a party that tells you that I will not stop mining today, today tomorrow. or tomorrow because my opponent imported people to come and but muddy possible, the saying. water. He, he's abusing Ghanaians. They are insulting our intelligence. They think we are stupid. This is election time and now Quatin has a, 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 his conscience awakening and he links it to political party financing. So, so we should justify what is going on because politics needs to be financed. I mean, what about life? Politics needs to be financed, so we must sacrifice life. We must sacrifice the future of the country. No, he says that we must look at the correlation between mining revenues and, the and, that and, and funding of political activity. <laughs> we've had world. we've had eight we've had eight elections in 1992. Where we talking about uh, 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 Galamse in election time? 
1996, where are we talking? In 1992, where are we talking, Galamse? 2008. Two, uh, uh, 1996, 2000, 2004, 2008. Where were, what were the main issues? The economy. How come all of a sudden, mm -hmm. in 2024 elections, the entire thing is about Galamse? And we are being told that we need to make it, uh, we need to manage it because we need to look at how we finance you uh, didn't politics. say that. You keep misrepresenting me. Okay. You didn't say that. I've, I've retracted that. You didn't say that. Let's, let's move on. What I'm saying is that there is nothing that can be justified politically. And people of Ghana must listen and make a point to get rid of anybody who would justify Galamse in any form in this current situation. Alan says that we are not going to stop mining because it's an industry that is going on in this country, but we must rebalance it and mine properly. So he's brought a 10-point plan. And the first part of that 10-point plan is a complete ban on what is happening now. You may short term one. Yeah, it's one year. But within that year, certain actions will be taken. <laughs> Those actions include a cessation of new licenses. It will include a review and an audit of all licenses that have been granted over the past 15 years. Because the, the connection between politicians and mining, which is stopping them from actively working, has to be broken. And it can only be broken if we know who is actively mining and who is behind the mining. If it is politically motivated, they can choose to come out and demonstrate that they are mining and mine responsibly. If you are a politically exposed person, if you're in political office and you want to benefit from mining activities, let us know you, let us see you, and mine responsibly. Don't hide behind people and say that uh, we need to keep Galamse going because otherwise we'll lose votes. If you win votes and the country dies, of what benefit is it to us? Political leadership is about taking hard decisions. It's not about taking decisions that will benefit your political party against the interests of the rest of the country. So an argument about oh, if we buy mining, uh, we will lose the election, and our opponents want us to buy mining, so we lose elections. It's not an, uh, 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 an argument uh, even the people who are uh, being asked to accept that should accept. And I'm talking about the mining areas. They shouldn't accept that argument that they're any for because it is a threat to their own lives. The people who are mining the way they are mining, they should know that it is a threat to their own lives. Okay. And the only way forward is to have responsible, sustainable mining. Mr. And Mr. Chirimate's 10-point plan, mm. unfortunately, we don't have the time to go into the entire plan, yeah. but you can even show it on your screen yeah. because it's available to show. Right. The 10-point plan can easily, if we go through it, as well as the larger view mm. of mining that's associated with the 10-point plan, if we go through that, then we give ourselves as a nation the chance, the chance to clean up. Yeah. The chance to reset, to rebalance how we mine, how we take our resources for the benefit of the entire country in a sustainable manner that will protect the interests of the future generations in the, uh, who are now coming up. We cannot continue like this. Mr. Chemati is very clear. We must ban buy, uh, uh, money as it is now, that legal is, and illegal. That is the true to mean that even we want AGC and everybody to... All of them, even their, 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 their leases have to be revised. It is in the plan. Okay. All the existing I mean, large scale... Money. You remember the Akilapa report? Mm. Rollins was so concerned that he had Professor Akilapa review the entire mining sector. You should read the Akilapa report. We need to review all those things. And therefore... Mr. Chematin is very clear. What is going on now cannot be justified under any form. It must be stopped immediately, including those who have licenses, but who are mis misusing the licenses, who are abusing the licenses, and the practices that are going on that are destroying Ghana's future. It must be stopped. Under no circumstances Mr. Martin, should I it think at this table, all of us agree that we need to do something. Yeah. Now, I, I, now, I, I, now, the question then is, would you say that after having an interministerial committee the first time around mm -hmm. that failed, for which we now have another one, <laughs> a smaller size, undertaking a number of programs for the first, the Gallam stop and all that, investing all that money. And now we've come to this point where our water bodies are, have been the worst, even before the start of the first campaign in 2017. Would you say in your own consciousness, that the president, Anado Dankwe Kufuado, and the vice, as well as the rest of the government, 
that he finds himself compo comp compositing have the political will to stop the ravaging of our water bodies and the type of illegal mining that is ongoing? Well, uh, first of all, I mean, I would say that you, you do not, first of all, even ban, for instance, driving just because there are infractions on the road. Same as even... So far-fetched, it's not funny. Uh, how? <laughs> Please go ahead. How? Go ahead. Again, if you have a media house which is probably involving an irresponsible misreportage or reportage, you don't necessarily ban media houses' activities. What you do is you embrace it and take it upon as yourself as leader and then try to fix it. Of course, uh, the solution to the whole fight against Galamsey is, is, is never an event. I mean, you recall there were also successes because if you admit that today we are seeing our water bodies being destroyed, then what essentially you are also saying is that some way previously it was better. And it took also the intervention of political leadership to also, I mean, improve it during those times. You see, the conversation on Galamsey is not that simplistic. If you want to reduce it to, let's say, I mean, the usual politics in blaming the president, particularly when Edouji tries to run a completely mechanical and legalistic argument mm -hmm. that because the constitution states that power is vested in, or all minerals are vested in the president, if you go to Asante Achem Domiabra and an irresponsible person, whether belonging to the MPP or NDC, I mean, engages in Galamsea activities, it means that the president is a Galamsea himself. I, it's, it's a very sad submission. The point I am trying to say is that when you look at the whole conversation on Galamse, it's not really an entirely uh, law enforcement issue. There are political, cultural, and social connotations to it. Of course, I explained the political bit in my earlier submission when I said that in, if you look at political parties uh, financing, there is a link between political parties financing and the Galamseyas activities, ir that. Yeah, irrespective of who is in op office. And so I asked a question about political will. I am coming. I'm not sure. Uh, hey, just let me give my submission and Ghanaian should, should judge. And ultimately, if you even move beyond the political connotation, you are also even looking at a social aspect of it. Of course, Edward was trying to, I mean, protect his side and make it look like maybe some way, somehow, the MPP will turn our argument is that we will lose political capital if we tend to fire the galaxy. That, that's not our position. You see, we... Can I can no, I land? No, no, can, no, I, no, can, no, I, can I land? Please, please, please. Can I land? Can I land? Please, please, please. When you were talking, I had no, a hard question. No, but listen to are you very well. You proceed. I think I sat here and said that that is not the position of the party. Because, I don't understand. No, I said that are you misspoke. Because uh, wow. the position he is the coordinator for of the, the campaign bit. in the area where Galamse is going yes, on. For and he speaks bit. for the campaign. Then he thinks for from, the campaign in from, that area. From, no, that from, is what the no, campaign from, is thinking. You are, you are no, that. from your logic. No, from, no, you are he's the coordinator oh, please, for middle please, belt. Please, no, please, please. From, from your logic. Guys, guys. From your logic. Every, in, the, in the mornings, let's get IU in all TV stations so that then people do not have a representation. So that we know that IU speaks for the campaign. But you are not the coordinator. What is your point? What is your point? So he missed. I was there. I was there, and I'm saying that the position of the party is that we are separating illegal mining from illegal miners. If you want to reduce the whole panel into such, we cannot do same. Let Baumia come out and, and do and what? His own, uh, you are free, and his own duka. No. Let him come out and his own, uh, you are free, and his own. Will you, will you allow me to speak? When you were talking, I was very respectful to so you. So you were there at the I event? I was at the event. I was at the event. And I'm saying that. So, I'm saying so that the, the post facto you, rationalization. No, 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 please, please, please. Sir, sir, well, sir, sir. Well, the post facto rationalization is that what he said. Is not the position of somebody who represents his office as appointed by the Baumia campaign. The point is that no person would promote the Galamsey's activities. Ah, but he just did. That's what I'm saying that he misspoke. How? Hmm. Dr. Ah. UFU, so Dr. When, PhD. So, so, so when Mr. Mahama, when Mr. Mahama mm -hmm. said that I will grant all Galamseyes in prison under Akufa Aminesi, you think that Be, was the position no, that we should because, all buy? Because, because of what? Continue. Let me speak. You think when Mahama spoke that way, <laughs> you just played, at least for, for the first time, you made a responsible and balanced report. When you played Nanes uh, Bidu, for the do, first time, we always do don't say that. You, you don't dictate what I say on no, this no, platform. No, 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 you can't. No, no, you know. Mr. Kwesi, Mr. Kwesi, 
you know me very well. Uh huh. Yes. And um, our private conversations are private conversations. That's fair. To come to the platform and categorically state that we are not fair and balanced, I think that it's not only an insult, but also I would say that a deliberate attempt to try to put our integrity, which all in sundry in Ghana and beyond our borders, no, as media general. What they just did do is just emotionally blackmail. No, no, no. But, no, but no, for no, the no, fact no, that I no, came here, no, you're not going to show none SVD. You no, played three no, 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 videos please. associated no, with the MPP no, please, no, and please. sought to create an but impression what is, that. What is wrong? Because we have an editorial judgment to make. And the judgment we made was that we were playing the videos, and subsequently, you don't know our conversations thereof. Now you claim that Professor Jenna Nopukwa Jiman's video was not played because it's a deliberate attempt. Did you even listen to the video? Did she promote Galamse? So what? Let's not make that the subject of, uh, of, of, uh, Roland, of the conversation. Roland, Roland, I asked you a specific Roland, question. Roland, Roland, no, please, no, please. no, you made Mr. a comment. No, you I asked you, no. you, you a specific question. This is not cross-examination. It's an interview. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, it's an I interview. Cross we, are, we are having a conversation. Please. You are having a conversation. You make your point. I make my point. Don't make it look like I'm, I'm under, under an oath no, no. to submit to. No, no, you're under no oath. Fair, Actually, fair your enough. opinion is your right. And you come here to espouse that opinion. But where you make inferences that we are unbalanced, we are not fair, we are not objective, that is your right as well. But we also have a certain recourse to put all matters straight in regards to the integrity of media general, as well as the person sitting here as well. And so I'm saying categorically that what you said is not true. Now going forward, I, mean, I ask you a specific question that based on the inferences that are made, does that at any point in time mean that the president, as well as his vice and the rest of the government, have the political will, looking at all the investments that have been made and the programming, to curtail Galamse. That's my specific question. And you say I shall allow you to go on the tangent. I say fair. Please, answer my question. Roland, if you ask whether or not the president has a political will, I'm not sure even if the president does not have the political will, even in the first place, there will be any uh, declaration of fight against Galamsey. The fact that you do not maybe successfully prosecute an agenda to a certain limit does not necessarily mean that you do not have the political will. You see, if you look at, for instance, the licensing regime, all the mining regulations, the mining laws that came into being, the fact that uh, we introduced the Operation Galam Stop, Operation Vanguard, and what have you, granted without even admitting it that it was successful, essentially symbolic about the president's push and will to be able to fight Galam State. That's why I try to bring in the analogy that the fact that you are having, for instance, if you go to our, on our roads, there, there, is a, there is improper or poor enforcement when it comes to road safety regulations. That's not mean that maybe the president is also unable or is unwilling to be able to maybe ensure that road safety regulations are conformed to. Similarly, when you look at our sanitation laws, the fact that people are throwing away rubbish rampantly does not mean that when it comes to enforcement of road safety or, sorry, sanitation laws, the president is not, not willing. You do not necessarily measure our commitment to fight Galamse based on, let's say, the negative impacts that we've witnessed. But it has to be balanced. What has been our approach? Our approach has been through, I mean, the... Uh, promulgation of LI when it comes to LI to regulate the mining activities uh, approach has also been the licensing. The licensing. There has been moments or times where we've uh, declared and actually disembarked tax force to be able to fight Galamse at the Galamse operation site. So yes, we've demonstrated that commitment. But I also do admit that we could have done more as a people. That's why I'm saying that the 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 entire problem or the entire fight. It's not necessarily that simplistic as we may, we may view it. it. It has both social, it has both political, it has both, I mean, cultural undertones that we, we have to broaden the conversation with. And I've always dared the NDC, and of course, our friends here. I mean, today, Mr. Babin is speaking as though <laughs> he's from yes, a different... I'm a member <laughs> of the MPP before. <laughs> now, I'm saying that in principle, I cannot belong to what is happening in the MPP. No. So, yes, I have been a member of the MPP no, no. I have never condoned illegal mining. Nobody, I will not condone no. illegal mining then, and I will not condone no. illegal mining Mr. now. Mr. Babin, nobody has condoned That's illegal mining. No, no, nobody because have I have been a member of the MPP, no, I cannot no, no. make my, Mr. my Mr. voice Mr. Babin, nobody has said that. Even if you look at my poster and by the point that I've made here, I've been very clear that at no point do the new patriotic party uh, condone illegal mining. 
Galamse activities, particularly those within the with water bodies, are something that we condemn in utmost terms. But I, I threw our mind to a realm that, as a people, we have to look at. But beyond that, I'm saying that we can sit here and play the politics of it, do the blame game, whether the MPP or the DC, we can hang it on the neck of the president. But if we do not understand the complexity of the problem as having the social, cultural, and political undertones, and then heading on to be able to address them, we will be sitting there and just deceiving ourselves. It is not a political fight necessarily. Ultimately, politicians will have to make the final decision. But if we sit here and leave the conversation between MPP and NDC people and pretend that some way, somehow, we are going to find solutions to it, where in the same vein, political parties are benefiting from it. You played on this video. I'm surprised you say you don't have any problem with it. But she was very clear, consistently mentioned that we'll, we'll promote Galamse or we'll let Galamseyers work. And so when, when it happens like that, particularly in a political environment, you do not necessarily expect the other party to, for instance, come out and say that, well, when we come, we are going to sacrifice you. It makes it very complex. Did you go through the Professor Frimpong Boateng's report? I have not gone to, but I'm aware there is such a report. Okay. Do you think, looking at all the things that went on before the leaking of that report, the leaking of videos, secret recordings, etc., and then subsequently in that report, individuals who play key roles in government, mentioned in that report. Don't you think that is an indictment on the government I, I, in this quest I, I, to be able to clamp down on illegal mining? I, I'm not sure it's about the level of the personalities of those involved. An illegal activity is still an illegal activity. You don't think it matters? No. Uh, you Whoever see, you is see, undertaking you see, an illegal... You see, you see the, the point is that it is, even if you are the president of, of the republic and you are engaged in an illegal activity, you should, you should be treated as such. Where I agree that if they are politically exposed people... And of course, Roland, like I told you, we cannot dissociate political activities, particularly the political financing from the operation of Galamseyes. To the extent that Galamseyes are even getting much influence and maybe may even be creeping into our political system. Of course, with the whole sense of getting more influence and building a very formidable force to be able to protect their industry. So I agree that there is a possibility that you could get politically exposed individuals in the Galamsee activities. But it's something that we have to condemn. And as a people, we have to call for their head. It doesn't matter which party the person is in, whether party Who A or party the B. the calling of the head? No, ultimately, it rests on leadership. But I'm saying that... Who is leadership? Of course, we are talking about government at the end of the day. Who is the head of the government? Roland, you are, you are, you are, <laughs> Roland. This is process and messy. No, 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 oh no, I just wanted to clarify. No, no, I no. just wanted to. No, you see, you see, you see, you see, you see, that is why that I find wrong. That is why I find wrong. That if, if you sit here and that's something as a media person, which is unethical, it means some way, somehow, we have to put the blame on the CEO of Media General. It doesn't happen anywhere. Ultimately, he has his part. I agree that there is that bit of command responsibility. But you as a person also need to take your responsibility for I'm think... landing, I'm landing. And again, you can also be very simplistic about it, mm. particularly when there are political connotations to it and stakeholders enjoy from it. All right. You have the NDC enjoying from it or right. benefiting mm -hmm. from it okay. politically. So, when that hype thing happens, Mr. You, Mr. Quartin, so you have let's, to factor let's assume in... that we use the Media General scenario. Yeah. I, as a perpetrator, undertake an activity that is unethical to all practices of journalism and media to the detriment of the organization for which I'm responsible to not only the organization and the CEO. And so the group CEO then will have to take a responsible action. Yeah. Herein within the environment and the, uh, and the premises for which this narrative is being undertaken, the other beneficiaries are the other media houses because of my exemplary activity, which is wrong, yeah. advice. Yeah. So we have those in multimedia all benefiting. What do you think would be the decision that would be taken by Beatrice Ajima and the CEO of Media General over my inactions? I don't think the question should be narrowed to only one personality. I'm saying that if you want to have a conversation about how to address what you did, you have to look at all variables, including Beatrice Ajeman, yourself, how it benefits other media houses that are also making pronouncements on it. Question. What do you think the decision will be from here? By my, for uh, am, my I, am I not entitled to answer questions how I, I, I can answer You're it? Entitled, sir. You're entitled. You're entitled. No, no, let's premise something. 
You know, for all this, we've had a number of actions that have been undertaken. There's been a certain historical recollection of licenses that have been given. Mm -hmm. And from 1957 to the last um, <laughs> period, you will find that we have in excess, between 2017 and now, 1,696. And these are legal concessionary licenses. Mm -hmm. Now, we have 57. We also have programs undertaken. Gallam stop, all the operations that have been undertaken. And can I say that's a justification that there's commitment? Edwige, can you say that that's a, a justification that there's commitment from the government? You see, I want to raise something to answer your question. 6th of April 2017, Gabi Asari Ochri Dakun, and this is what he says on Facebook Posterity shall not forgive Akufuado and our generation. If we don't win the war against Galamse, this is Gabi Asari Ochidakun on the 6th of April 2017. Look, from the data you've just shown, from 1995 to the year 2016, only 57 leases or concessions were given, five, seven. From 2017 till now, Akufuado had issued 1,600. What do you mean, is a minerals commission? No, in fact, all minerals are vested. They only act on his behalf, please. I understand the law. In fact, my master's, I did it in natural resources. Thank you. Look, we have 1,696. What, what is wrong with that? That issue, issue licenses? Issue a under Akufuado alone. <laughs> you see, there's something called. Hmm? Leadership response. It is the body language of the leader that tells his subordinates whether to take him serious or not. Look, you have a situation where the regional minister for Western Region, the chairman of RECSEC, MPP MP for Takrade, meets Galamseyes together with the MPP parliamentary candidate for Wasa East. And it's from Paul. And directly in front of them, he tells them that look, the, the operation Gallam stock or whatever, if they dare come to that place, attack them because we have stopped it. That is your record. Now, if the chairman of RESEC is the one condoning it, the question you should be asking, and I'm happy you brought. They respected Beatrice Ajman into the conversation. Okay, let's leave her out. No, no, no. No, the, no, <laughs> no, no, the, no, no. It's, no, no, no hold on. Listen to me. <laughs> she drew, uh, he drew oh, a scenario. If please. you listen to me, you'll notice okay, that sir. it's a very okay, sir, please go ahead. I'm talking about leadership response. She would have called you and queried you. Mm. Now, so, I'm sure he's sacked. Exactly. Now, when the president rep in Western region, an endemic area for illegal mining, meet Galam Sayers and tell them that the operation that he is supervising, that Galam stock, if the soldiers come to those areas, attack them. What has been the president's response to that reckless meeting? Nothing. So I say that our president has this whole thing, hear no evil, see no evil. And so if you have that kind of situation, we're going to have a situation where we'll be where we are. But you see, you raise a very fundamental point. And I noticed that uh, my brother was running away. If you listen to... <laughs> no, he never ran away from Oh, he never did. Now. Okay. If you listen to Mrekuduka, Mrekuduka is Bamiya's coordinator on mining. If you listen to Afriye, he is Bamiya's coordinator on middle belt. Now, Mrekuduka says carefully that... NDC had brought Togolese into the country, reason, and that it is these Togolese who are muddying the waters to make the government look bad. The Togolese? Yes. If you listen to Afriye, he says that NDC brought Togolese, and that it is these Togolese who are destroying the water bodies. Now, guess what? Akufuado is the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. Akufuado, and ba in fact, Bamia is the chairman of the police council. He has 40,000, no, he has 40,000 policemen under him. Okay. With all this, 
the, 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 the commander-in-chief of the armed forces had 13,000 soldiers under him. He allows Togolese into the country without, you know, protecting our borders. First of all, leadership failure. Now, these people now come into this country, broad daylight, destroy our water bodies. He takes no action whatsoever. Then, the person he is asking Ghanaians to vote for in 2024, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, his coordinators on mining sit on, you know, in front of the camera and say that we will not stop Galamse now. We will not stop Galamse tomorrow. Now, curiously, Roland, Dr. Afriye is the chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Health. It has been discussed on this platform. The direct nexus between Galamse and health. To the extent that today, women who are giving birth are doing so without genitalia, without their limbs growing. The chair of the Parliamentary Select Committee, who coordinates Dr. Baumier's activities in the middle belt, now is telling us that it is the opposition NDC that had brought. How useless can this government be? Now, and I want what to conclude on this. Useless? No, because you see, we have given you executive authority, the territorial integrity of Ghana. Beyond that, the MPP now message is that it is the NDC that is behind GJA, organized labor, TUC, NATS, my workers union, and that it is the NDC that has sent these respected organizations to demand of Akufuado a declaration of a state of emergency. No, they have said that. I mean, how in God's name can you say that it is the NDC that is behind all this? In fact, Mrekuduka was clear. Or see, it is the NDC that is behind all these people. I hope you have not heard him. He never said that. Look, you see, so that you put matters in proper perspective, play the video of Meku Duka. Yes, yes. Play the video of Ayu. He was clear um, so that right, it is the right, NBC. Right. You look, play you the see? two videos so that I... I and, and, and so I will just look. Yeah. Look, all these organizations who are calling... Play. Let them play. Yes. Okay. okay, so that I'll give my time. No, no, I'll no, 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 sit my time. Please, when you, I come back, no more to do Please play the two videos. Oh, are you? Oh, I think Mekudu I'm Kafes, are you? <laughs> <laughs> are you has been played already? And this is for Shisham Profobiachi. Say, Bencha Geshem. Bencha Mining. And the Profobia at Yesi. Kwa Kwanso. Or you and this is for Nabe Yazano. Kabrani who said we are winning the seats in the mining areas. So they decided to go and import foreigners. No more no more buyer, no man can't show Mr. Munko in Renumu, Namunko to Godo, or some Munko soon, no more Kotu. Namore Fimuana, the whole year. In so I have a problem there. And you are meant to have started. A year Obina or Perse. Anka omo ye ye nanka ye di speed. Nanka ya caught ni anka ya stop it gal I'm safe for nanka ya lose your seat. Yes stop you omo na yes stop you omo china Na oma ko fa omo TV for na ko na omo omo cro for ka ena galamse ena galamse na galamse ye tu no akra in so no e wakra omo mbra kuma se me demonstration and come be yesterday <laughs> um, like, why be? Um, in 2022, October, the Ghana Water Company publicly 
And this is also published by Three News, the Business and Financial Times, etc. Thank uh, God to Google, you are able to do this research. As the fifty percent of Ghana Water Company treated um, water wasted due to Galamsey activity, and that's over two years ago. So it cannot be true that the waters became milky and very leptinized just because uh, we are having election uh, just uh, two months ago or a month ago. And, and that is why, uh, unfortunately, when we hear uh, description that the problem is not simplistic, I, I, I find it difficult to accept because indeed it is simple. So what can be done? The, the simplicity about it is that there's policy failure and enforcement failure because serious politicians, huge politicians, big politicians are benefiting from it. That is, the poly that is the simplicity of it. And because they are benefiting, enforcement is failing. Because if you send Galam stop, you set up a Galam stop and send them into the bush. And when they get into the bush, they tell you this is politician A's concession. And indeed, you will find military, informal military uh, uh, protecting that. And you leave that and attempt to get rid of somebody else, whether he's Togolese or Malian or Chinese or Nigerian or whatever, who, whose concession is supposed to have a license, but is being mismanaged in terms of practices, then all that the Galam stop will do is that they will go and take, they also go and take what they can get from them and move on. Because enforcement cannot be uneven. You understand? So there is nothing simplistic about this. Until we have a clear political response, a leadership response, we cannot fight this. And since 2022, recently, the new conversation, and I'll call it new because it almost died out, the new conversation, and, and it's heating up now, started again from Ghana Water. Mm. Who said about a month ago that we had not just fifty percent, but they had lost capacity mm. to supply water to Cape? That their machines are in that the Their machines ha ha have gone because no amount of at some point no amount of chemicals uh, uh, can clean the water, and no amount of machinery can deal with with what is coming. And we are now in danger of having the Volta Lake also uh, 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 what you, affected because there are activities ongoing now on the black and white. Uh, voters until we have a clear plan we will not survive this fight and that is why we are saying that mr chairman's 10 point plan and the post medium and long term plans are needed if mining is to be sustained in this country and if you don't mind we can just have a, a run through the 10 point plan quickly if you can scroll it up uh, we can Your see plan. yes yeah. okay. yes we have we have a 10 point and plan do we have their plan <laughs> you know we have a 10 point okay. plan. This is what the politicians don't want to hear the complete ban on small scale. But they're not the only one who has I think most yeah. of them. Yeah, not politicians. Politicians yeah, are not calling for a ban. It, it is civil society who are calling for a ban. At the moment, okay. concern civil Including society. The DJ. Yes. Mm. But politicians are giving all manner of uh, uh, attempted. Uh, but the, the, everybody is saying that Actually, we must the deal with this. Well, they have to tell us because we have said what we are going to no, do. Please, please, oh, no, well, I, the, I like point that, two that is about the mobilization of all machinery and equipment, <laughs> including the earth. Movie. Yes, move it fast, move it faster. Whether legal or illegal, because we are saying that the legal licenses are being we'll abused. You you're doing PowerPoint presentation. Three. That's why. Go on. You know, the inventory, storage, and preservation of the machinery, mm -hmm. because you can't seize equipment and have them diverted for the use of other parties. Four. Yes, you can seize equipment oh, yeah. and have it diverted for but the use of other ones. But this them to buy the turbidity of the water. No, no, it's not about. It's a policy. It's a clear policy. Please. Water must be dealt with. Five. Money from us. Five. Restoration <laughs> of the land sites <laughs> should be done. Six. I think it end at five. Six. <laughs> Six, this is very critical. Which cancellation of all small scale and community mining licenses is issued within the last 15 years. The cancellation will be followed by a comprehensive and complete audit of all small scale and, and community mining. Yes. How, many, how many points do you have? And then, uh, oh, so, ten. Uh, we can't allow ten. you. Sorry, 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 okay, sorry, okay. Okay. They should pay for no, the no rest. Airtime, okay. No airtime, but. Okay. Now, so we are saying no, that. No, so, 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 so I, we are saying I, that. I just, I just, we have a plan. I just want to be very categorical mm. here. Mm. That. Indeed, if you look at what is being espoused by all the political parties, including you, Dr. Mahmoud Ubaumia 
I've heard him severally in his stakeholder engagement, mm. the community engagement, the mm. town hall meetings, mm. that he intends to uh, make it more participatory at the local level, yeah. where they have your logical services department, they'll come in, they'll specifically tell you where the minerals are. So when you go, you know that you are going here. The NDC says that we want to create or uh, decentralize minerals commission offices, environment, EP offices, yeah. they'll be local and they'll provide the services. Yeah. I think that we all have the plans in the book, just like we've always been learning the basic economics. The okay. So let me tell you, you that. Let me tell you that. So the problem is with the enforcement. So the difference is because enforcement is failing because there is political involvement and neither of the parties are prepared to confront that. How? They are benefiting from digging it. NDC has no benefit. And NDC for benefited record, from digging uh, 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 and they are waiting to come and also dig. Who oh, how? This, Mr. this Mr. schemes... Mr. Mr. This Mr. Schemes, Mr. Schemes, Mr. So how Mr. do we do the enforcement? That's that is very where, critical. That is where we do the audit of the licenses. If you audit the licenses, you will expose the people behind the digging. That's why we are saying that if you're a politician and you want to dig, go out there, tell the world that you're a politician, but you want to leave politics and dig gold. Then let us see that you are following the practices. Let us see that you are doing the right thing. Because as we have said, we cannot for, uh, get rid of mining entirely in this country. But we must make sure that those who are mining follow the rules, follow the structures, pay their taxes, and Ghanaians benefit, and they don't destroy the environment, they don't destroy water bodies. We will ban mining in forest reserves. We, we will repeal the LI, which has exploded okay. mining activities in rivers and, and, and okay. forests. Uh, uh, we will repeal that ally and we will make sure that anybody who enters a forest reserve or who mines in water is put away for life. Life in prison. Mr. Mr. It, it, it Mr. is Mr. not Mr. acceptable. You say it that is Dr. not acceptable. Ye... If you don't fight political Mr. involvement in Galaxy, a medical doctor? No. Ah. I think so. Okay. Yeah, he's a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. hospital no, no, have no, no, my last sentence. You have landed. No, my last sentence. I'm saying that. Enforcement failure. If you don't get rid of the politicians okay. involved in mining, mm -hmm. no beautiful schemes will work. Okay. And the two parties are only talking about schemes. They are not talking about getting rid of their hand, their political hand in small scale right. mining. Uh, Mr. Kosikwati, so what will happen to him if he misspoke and is misrepresenting the facts? for that Baumia campaign? No, 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 but you know the Ghana Medical no. and Dental Council, for instance, you, can on their own... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because you say he misspoke. Yeah. He doesn't represent <laughs> Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia. Oh, uh, I'm, no, I'm not sure that is what I'm trying to say. You see, what, so, what, what is most important okay. is what Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia stands for and represents. Uh, that okay. at the end of... Oh, Mr. Wami. <laughs> Please, you have only told me. My time is up that at the end of the day, he is going to encourage responsible mining. Of course, a lot of uh, the miners do spend a lot of money in the prospecting. And so uh, you, you dig, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not really familiar with the process, but during the prospecting uh, period is where this land destruction and degradation do happen. So what Dr. Baumia is presenting is that uh, we are going to get a whole system where you have uh, qualified persons to do prospecting so that when you are very much aware that if you are going on this land, the land already has maybe contains this amount of minerals so that we will not be wasting land during the prospecting uh, processes. So for Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, his point is to be able to protect, regulate and enforce all the uh, I mean, mining regimes or mining regulations for enforcement. Yes, responsible mining. But he can't do it now. Uh, but if he does it now, why would you? No, 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 please. <laughs> you, 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 were, you were in power for four years. If you are, come on, go, let, let me learn. Let me learn. I'm, no, I'm answering your question. I'm, you I'm answering answer. your question. I'm answering, I'm answering. If the logic is that you can do everything now, then you should, there is no then point in being Mahama coming power. again then because you were in power for four years. If the logic is, if, if, the, if the logic is that, let me can I, oh, you gave me two minutes. I, I, oh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm not even, so no, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm not even that. Doing the fit, no, no, no. Let me just, can I land? Can I land? If the logic is that, if the logic is that everything is supposed to be done now, then there is no point in Mahama coming because he, can, he, he came before. What I'm saying is that we are going to encourage uh, responsible mining, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, when it comes to Galamseya's activity, particularly mining in the river bodies, is what the MPP stands against. You see, the Ghana Medical Association, 
has a member called Dr. Afriye. The Ghana Medical Association had given an indication of their opposition, very, very vehement opposition, to the menace of Galamse. One of your members had openly said they will not stop Galamse now, do not stop tomorrow. I'm saying that you, you are, spoke. Please, please, no, you. You, the Ghana Medical Association, you are quiet on it. Two, the Ghana Medical and Dental Council, when you issue a license to somebody to practice as a medical doctor, and he promotes activities that directly impact on the health of people, what do you say about such a person? I think it's important that such organizations in times of moral crisis do not maintain their neutrality. It does not make sense. The position is clear. On the 7th of December, 2024, Ghanaians must declare a state of emergency on the MPP. Galamseyers cannot fight Galamse. It's as simple as that. Do I also have one twenty seconds? Oh, yes. wow. You cannot oh, shift the onus <laughs> on to associ <laughs> associations. Oh. It is about leadership. And leadership is about policy and enforcement. Mm. There's clear policy failure and there's failure of enforcement. It lies squarely on political leadership. Perfect. Well, so let me read a number of comments as well. And we're grateful that all of you found time. This one is coming from Chief Mante. In fact, the government and inner science don't seem to be tackling this seriously. How can one stand on a political yeah. platform and say that somebody imported foreigners to come and pollute our water bodies? <laughs> so nobody checks who comes in into Ghana and who enforces regulations on security and ensures that the licenses that have been given are well undertaken by way of the procedures and the mandate. How could a political party sponsor unions and other bodies? Are they not Ghanaians also who can reason? Now, um, Mr. Sechi, Rich Sechi says, look, the current state of Galamse needs to be clamped down. We shouldn't postpone it after the election. It has to be done now. The water bodies are terrible. And then I have Zach, okay? Master Planner Junior Kintampo says, Aduji, Tell Adudi to channel this energy he's using to communicate this morning to go back to the Galamse site where Kuku Boahi and some NDC members are encouraging them to do Galamse to stop. Are they, are they, are they, are they the people with the Hello? Police? Hey, time now, so. <laughs> okay, I have this one from Helga. Helga says, ah, 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 the impudence and lack of respect being shown by Mr. Kwisi Kwati in your studio. He shouldn't say that. The doctor spoke clearly in Chi. And this is what his response is, really. If the Baumia campaign did not order him to speak that way, then public apology should be issued and actions taken against Dr. Eyue Friye. Jesus Lord, save us. <laughs> and then I have this one from um, Jones Giddy, who says that, good morning to you and the uh, the panel is out there. Let me just uh, get a couple more, and then we'll be out of the studio. This one is coming from Jerry. It said, if, if leaving MPP could make people this truthful in relation to what lawyer Boabia Samoa is saying, then every person, including whoever is in political office and the MPP at a point in time, must leave their party while they are in office so that they are able to speak like the way Lawyer Boabin is speaking. All right. Look, we have Cash Out goes with the Shoko Star 439 hash. Also, we have Dewa, which means that you have to step into the world of Dewa 539 for your chance to win big with your Dewa Direct and then Dewa Chop Money. Now, with Dewa Direct, you have to dial Star 446 hash. You pick the range of the numbers 1 to 39, and then you get to win big 20 times, 40 times, and 400 times your stake. And you win cash every evening as well, 7 p.m. And on Sundays, the draw is 6 p.m. Ellie Bet also love the watch up morning and it's at 10 a.m. where we have the draw. So you dial staff for success, choose a range of the numbers one to 39, win 20 times your stake, 
40 times your stake and 400 times your stake. You can play online as well. Go to the portal, dewa-nle.com, and then you dial as well. Thank you, gentlemen. Eduji, thank you. Lawyer YB, I see you're conferring with, oh, Roland, is it your former party Roland, member? Roland, Roland, this morning I'm inviting no, you to Kumasi. And then, and no, then Roland, we seek Roland, party as well. No, Roland, this morning I'm inviting you to Kumasi. We are launching the Women Manifesto to create a specialized bank. Our correspondent will yeah, be there. So be there. <laughs> Thank you also for coming <laughs> to